In this tutorial, we will take a look at creating views for a list. Views allow you to customize how the list items are displayed using options like sorting, grouping, and filtering. Creating views can make viewing or working with lists much more manageable when there is some order to their presentation. For the examples in this video, we'll be working with the vendor list on the accounting site. So I'll open the approved vendors list here. All lists have a default view named All Items, or for document libraries, it's named All Documents. This displays the list of items in the order they were added to the list. Some lists do come with additional views, such as the calendar and task list. The view you're working with displays in the breadcrumb trail after the list name. For many lists, the only view available is the All Items view, as is the case with this vendors list. Additional views can be created for different purposes or different audiences viewing the list. For our example, we will create a view that groups the vendors by the type of service they provide. This makes it easy for someone who's looking for a specific type of vendor, such as a caterer or printing service. So to get started creating our new view, on the List tab, click on the button Create View. And from here, I will choose the format Standard View. In the view settings screen here, the first thing I need to do is give the view a name. And I'm going to call this by category. In the columns section, we select which columns of information will display in our view and in what order from left to right. The columns that are already selected are displayed in the all items view. For this new view, I'm going to unselect attachments, city, and state as well as vendor category, since I will be grouping the vendors by category. Next, I'll scroll down to the sorting section. And I would like to see the vendors displayed alphabetically by the vendor name within each category grouping. Then to group them by the category, I'll scroll down here to the group by section, expand that. And then I choose the column which I'm grouping by which is vendor category. And that's all the settings I need for now for the view. So I'll scroll to the bottom and then select OK. So now in the view, you'll see all the vendor categories. The number in the parentheses you see next to each group is a count of how many vendors are in that group. To view the vendors, just click the plus next to the category name. And that displays all the vendors alphabetically by vendor name. So I'll navigate away from this list back to the main accounting page. And notice when I click on the link to return to the vendors list, it defaults to the all items view. Since this list will be viewed by many users across the company, it makes sense that the list defaults to the view we just created. So to make that change to the view we just created, up at the top, click on the list tab, switch to the view we just created called by category, Back up on the List tab, click on Modify View. In this name section, I'll check the box here to make this the default view, and then OK. Now when I navigate away from the list, go back to the main accounting page again. And again, I'll click on the link to go back to the vendors list. Now it's defaulting to the grouped view. In the second example, I will create a view for the accounting personnel so they can quickly see if any of the vendor contracts have expired. So to create the view, again, I go to the List tab and then click on Create View. Again, I'm starting with the standard view. And I'm going to call this view Expired Contracts. The columns selected are the columns I had selected for my last view, which is fine, I'll leave it at that. Down in the sorting section, I would like to sort the list by their expiration date. This time we're going to use the filter feature and the filter I'm creating will filter on dates older than today. So I'll change the selection here from show all items in this view to show items only when the following is true. So I only want to show items where their expired date 
is less than or equal to today's date. And for today's date, we just enter the word today inside of the square brackets. So rather than entering an actual date, using this special date function today, we'll always compare it to whatever the current date is. And we'll use a couple of other features we didn't in our last view. The first being inline editing. And since this view is being created for the internal accounting people who maintain this list, if I check this box, it lets them update the records in the list right in the list without having to open each record to make the changes. Tabular view will add checkboxes next to each row. Again, very helpful for people who are maintaining the list, and this would allow the user to select multiple vendors or items in the list and maybe delete them or some other bulk operation. The total section allows you to add various types of totals, such as sums or averages, to the columns in the list. We don't have any numeric columns in this list, but what we can do is add a count function just to count how many vendors display in the list. In essence, how many are expired at this point. So I've chosen all my settings for this view. I'll select OK to save. So I'm returned to the list, which is only showing me vendors with expired contracts. Today is July 7th, so you can see all the dates in the expires column are prior to that. Let's see, I'm looking at this list and I realized that Peterson Brothers contract was renewed, it just wasn't updated in this list and needs to be updated to 2011. With that option that I had selected for inline editing, I can mouse over the row I want to edit, click on the edit button. I'm now able to go into each of these columns and make the change. So I'll change this to the year 2011 and then I'll click the save button. That vendor disappeared from the list because it is no longer expired. Let's take a look at some of the other options available with views. So go back here to the list tab and choose modify view. The style option lets you choose a style which changes how the list is displayed. A commonly used style is shaded which shades every other row in the list. These folders options apply to lists that organize the items in the list using folders. The default selection will show items inside the respective folders. The option to show all items without folders will show all of the list items together regardless of which folder they are stored in. The item limit option lets you control the number of items displayed in a view. You can choose to display them in batches with next and previous buttons like 10 to a page or you can limit the total number of list items in the view. In the mobile section, determine if the view should be accessible from mobile devices. You can make the view the default view for mobile access and indicate the number of items to display at one time. So here we have seen some examples of how creating views for a list makes viewing and working with the list much easier.